Hey, welcome to the Lux channel. Often I shoot uh, video episodes for uh, advanced uh, system software engineers and advanced um, uh, programmers or architects, but uh, there is an exception. Uh, today, this video, I thought, uh, let me shoot a video so that it helps um, in case if you are uh, beginning uh, system software development or else. Uh, you know kernel programming and stuff like that so whenever you do anything uh, related to system you may come across uh, uh, the data uh, uh, transfers between user space to the kernel space and kernel space to the user space i have uh, discussed about this topic in uh, uh, various episodes at uh, various instances i have discussed something about it in uh, as you can see here in uh, io control uh, 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 video series uh, uh, somewhere down the line i uh, mentioned the same in this uh, you know architectural uh, diagram which i did uh, and uh, shared uh, over here in the website so this is an interesting uh, ph phenomena and uh, uh, down the line as you progress in your career uh, you may need to do uh, a software architecture or something like that and you need to uh, follow certain rules and uh, sometimes there can be some sort of a, a performance penalty and you need to see how you can overcome and uh, sometimes you may do something uh, related to ipc and stuff like that in in case if you need to communicate uh, with uh, you know multiple processes uh, sometimes within the same system or sometimes uh, across multiple systems so in any case <laughs> there is a uh, there is some amount of data uh, transfers or logistics is involved in the back end uh, where it should move from one entity to other entity Sometimes it is just the user space to the kernel space and kernel space to the user space. Sometimes it's about uh, if it is a process to process IPC, then you need to do some kind of, uh, you know, uh, transfer from uh, one user space, uh, you know, process to another user space process. So essentially, whenever you think about IPC, what is an IPC? It is, it's a platform enabled by the kernel so that uh, a process can uh, push some data to the kernel and then kernel uh, can send this data to another registered process so in case if you use sockets uh, it happens uh, through networking um, abstraction or networking technologies whereas in case if you use some native uh, uh, mechanism like uh, uh, pipes or message queues uh, it happens uh, uh, through its own uh, platform so that's what it is what the reason i'm saying uh, a native uh, platform is uh, you should understand some sometimes whenever you use something like sockets you are essentially communicating uh, between two systems and sometimes uh, the other remote system uh, uh, or the process in the remote system to be precise uh, can be in a windows system or else it can be in some other operating system so this is this is the reason i can't say sockets is a you know sort of a native ipc it is it is supported in linux of course but if you see as a whole uh, sockets uh, technology it's based on networking and networking is you know uh, is an effort to connect uh, uh, processes across multiple platforms and as well as you know the main objective of networking is also providing interoperability so uh, this is the reason uh, we can uh, keep that as an sort of exception so uh, uh, in case if you are uh, uh, you know uh, curious uh, to understand this analogy i, I thought uh, let me show a video because this is a video i uh, i truly loved it it's a very small video completely not related to tech to be frank it's a video about a baby snake uh, a guy have a pet snake and he puts it in this <laughs> in a small sand pit and it goes inside the sand pit and it comes out it pops out and then again it you know crawls inside out so let me uh, show you guys uh, this video so that um, you can understand exactly what i'm thinking about so let's for a moment imagine the snake is the data you want to pass you know from uh, you know one layer to other layer and uh, so on as such. so this is the video uh, which i'm talking about you can search like uh, pet snake in the sand i just don't want to show the full video i'm not uh, uh, really aware like whether it will violate any copyright or anything like that let me just uh, show a quick uh, preview so that i can share the link uh, or links below in this video description so that you can watch uh, uh, the youtube video more <laughs> in case if you are interested so if you click any of this variants i don't know which is the real one and which is not the real one i i suppose this is the real one because it has more views so let's click the same and uh, 
uh, if you go here you can see here uh, the guy uh, drops the snake into the sand pit and then it slowly goes inside so this you imagine uh, data uh, going from user space to the kernel space so the sand uh, uh, let's assume this represents your kernel layer or the kernel space so that snake is going inside and then slowly it you know pops out so this really represents the data which is you know going from one uh, uh, you know a location to another location uh, you know something uh, 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 when it happens uh, you know kernel is involved you can see here suddenly it popped up and it shows its uh, head <laughs> out so this is how uh, you can imagine so this video is uh, uh, you know you can uh, use it as a source of inspiration or study for various uh, things in case uh, 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 if you are architecting some uh, uh, software or some product you can also use this in terms of uh, you know uh, taking certain architectural decisions if you uh, trust me uh, i have changed a lot of architecture of um, my own uh, uh, toffee uh, data center uh, code uh, to be precise toffee data center i started quite recently uh, versus toffee is a, originally a fork of uh, traffic squeezer so toffee data center literally uh, this video have inspired me so that uh, i can take some design clues out of this and then i have uh, you know tried to implement uh, uh, whenever i architected the toffee data center so that i have that exclusive control of uh, data going from one uh, entity to other entity or one module to other module the entire uh, data logistics uh, how i managed in my uh, uh, project so uh, this is again if you compare uh, this video it is uh, you can uh, uh, relate this video like a swimmer uh, swimming inside the water or uh, who is swimming across the water i'm sorry not inside the water so you can see here this again uh, looks almost similar to this video if you see here is going above the surface of the water again he goes inside the surface and he does the same so this is how uh, you can relate uh, the data uh, flowing from uh, uh, one location to the other location especially anything like ipc is involved so uh, once again i would like to mention this is not a video i would like to fully focus you can see here uh, by the way sorry to interrupt you can see here under the water it looks completely different the view under the water completely it looks different you can imagine the data is inside the kernel you can see here so this is how you can imagine so this is what if you go back here and whatever uh, the architectural diagram i mentioned in uh, uh, copy from user and copy to user as well so you, uh, you can imagine uh, the data as, whenever it is inside the kernel space you can imagine it is like the person who is swimming under the water or else the snake is uh, inside or you know under that uh, uh, you know bed of sand or inside the bed of sand so this is what it is so this is uh, a video uh, uh, why i showed this two couple of videos is in case if you are a beginner you can understand uh, the design principles of the same don't uh, you know completely uh, fantasize and don't uh, give extra credit to ipc ipc is a sort of very simple mechanism where you can send the data from one location to other location and in case uh, if you are, want to send uh, um, in a more efficient way and uh, to reduce the overhead don't use sockets and in case if you want to uh, provide that interoperability and uh, in in uh, in sometime in the future you need to provide uh, uh, you know device to device connectivity ipc between two uh, processors then you can use uh, uh, something like socket so this is what it is whereas if you personally ask like i mentioned in many videos i don't use uh, uh, message queues or all uh, that other options i would like to prefer sockets whether let it be slow let it have any uh, performance overheads but still uh, if you ask me uh, i prefer to use uh, sockets because uh, it's more uh, uh, easy to debug it provides you uh, a sort of very stable code uh, and it is also easy to debug this is this is the sort of design criteria i would like to follow i don't bloody care uh, whether the code is not uh, optimized as a sort of you know first priority for me the first priority is code priority uh, of i mean design criteria or design priority is the code should be reliable and the code should be easy to manage and it is easy to 
you know design as well so this is what it is so i'm more of an entrepreneur at times than a developer so that's what it is so so in case uh, if you are an architect if you want to take any sort of inspiration you can take some inspiration out of those two videos in case if you are uh, struck uh, designing any uh, specific flow or uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, design criteria of your uh, stack or else uh, your uh, product uh, uh, design or architecture you can take uh, some sort of inspiration uh, through the same so other than that uh, hope you guys have watched a few of my uh, recent videos in which uh, the introduction i showed a uh, uh, bunch of ants uh, going inside and coming out of an ant pit so this video i shot in a park one day and uh, once again it inspired me whenever i see these ants i imagine uh, uh, like uh, you know processes in a system or else uh, they also represents uh, you know flow of data in a networking channel so that's what it is so it uh, it again uh, inspires in case if you are uh, you know architect if you are uh, you know software architect or a product architect you know you can get some design clues or else if you are just a beginner imagine that you know the ant pit represents your kernel uh, or the kernel space imagine the ants represents your system calls or your uh, you know data you want to pass so you can see definitely suddenly there will be bunch of ants going inside that ant pit and suddenly they emerge from some other hole uh, across um, across that uh, you know uh, garden so this is what it is so this again uh, you can take design clues like you know a sort of a channel uh, where uh, they establish and they get to that channel at one end and then they come out of that channel at the other end so once again uh, this again i need to uh, take certain design clues because based on this overall principle is what i have designed uh, even my uh, you know entire trophy trophy or uh, uh, the or much earlier the traffic squeezer project itself so that's what it is so uh, the main objective of uh, doing it is uh, to create a sort of uh, you know optimized tunnel between two ends or multiple ends so that's what it is so similar way if you see the data communication uh, from one process to other process uh, uh, whenever such transfers happens from one uh, region to other region uh, like i said before user space to the kernel space or kernel space to the user space or else data communication between two processes uh, you can take certain uh, you know uh, examples like this and you can visualize and in case you are not a beginner <laughs> you are an architect then you can use this analogy and you can take certain decisions uh, and you can change your design criteria make it more optimized or else you can make it uh, uh, like me if you think if you focus you can think about rather than optimization uh, think about reliability think about simplicity so that it always works <laughs> and it is easy to maintain it is it is easy to debug in case if something is not working also so things like this often uh, i do discuss uh, with my students <laughs> hope you guys have seen uh, the students tab uh, i do have uh, in uh, many cases i do have students uh, with more than uh, a decade of industrial experience and some cases even couple of decades or so 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 uh, whenever they have any uh, specific challenges in their um, Uh, career or sometimes if they are architecting or else sometimes they are finding any uh, technical roadblocks uh, they do discuss uh, with me of course they don't discuss about the company uh, proprietary stuff wherever they are working but uh, generally they generally discuss uh, uh, certain aspects and uh, Uh, often i do uh, give them weird examples like this so that uh, they get some kind of uh, uh, you know inspiration and then uh, they can also get their uh, you know they can also get their uh, mental blocks to get cleared away so that uh, they can take these uh, clues and then they can use this uh, when they you know um, architecting something and then they can move on from there and they can find some solution uh, for whatever problems they are facing or else in case if they have any weird requirement then they can uh, um, uh, uh, find uh, the suitable uh, Uh, you know uh, solution for the same so this happens almost day to day basis whenever i discuss uh, or engage with my students especially this happens more frequently uh, for more senior level uh, 
uh, students who i got some cases even i have a couple of students with, who are much older than me but you know any person may get issues in their uh, career that doesn't mean he is young or he is just new even if he is uh, there in the industry for many decades even he may also face some issues let him be sometimes he can see you as well so this is quite common um, so this is something i discuss on day to day basis so this is the first time i thought let me shoot some interesting video so that uh, it is little off topic but hey come on there is lot of technical stuff you can anyway read it online so what is the use of having a youtube channel again i i teach something which is already existing in the internet so this is what it is so this is what excites me uh, to do a channel so that it gives a complete different view of learning experience and a complete different perspective of understanding things in the life so that you can use them as and when it is required uh, so hope you guys are loved watching this video uh, in case if you have any uh, uh, questions or in case if you have any ideas or uh, uh, anything to discuss uh, be in touch uh, via mail So thank you once again for watching this video stay tuned have a nice day bye bye